Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of India Detailed. Today, we are going to talk about one of the most prosperous and dynamic periods of Indian history, the age of the Kushans. Theirs was a vast empire that extended from Khotan to Banaras and from Kashmir to Saurashtra. They ruled over most of the northern Indian subcontinent, Afghanistan and parts of Central Asia. The first issuers of gold coins in India, this warrior tribe had quite a good dominance over the Silk Route. Let's know more about them in a moment. In the early part of the 2nd century BCE, the Hunas defeated the Yuchi tribe of Central Asia and forced them out of their lands. This Yuchi tribe further got divided into groups, one of which defeated the Shakas and established themselves in Bactria. They were the Kushanas. Many of their coins, inscriptions, architectures, records in Chinese chronicles and Buddhist texts, as well as Kallanas, Raja Tarangini, tell us about the Kushanas. Kujula Kadaphysis was the first ruler of the Kushanas. His empire extended from the borders of Persia to the Indus. Vimataktu, son of Kujula Kadaphysis, expanded his kingdom from Afghanistan to Kashmir and issued the first known gold coin on Indian land. Vima Kadaphysis was the son of Vimataktu, who stabilized their dominions. One of the most popular Kushan rulers ruled an extensive empire from Bactria to Patliputra. The Chinese traveler Wan Zhang said that he controlled the trade route from Afghanistan to the Indus Plains. Buddhism in his time had undergone a lot of change. The Buddhist council or Sangiti held in his reign saw Buddhism getting divided into Hinayanism and Mahayanism. He patronized many artists, scholars, philosophers like Ashwaghosh, Nagarjun, etc. Vashishka, Huvishka and Vasudev I were Kanishka's successors who tried to consolidate the empire. With the demise of Vasudev I, the rule of the Kushans came to an end. Their coins broadly follow Hellenistic styles. Their coinage was found in gold, copper and silver. The use of Greek and local languages along with their scripts were seen on these coins. Kujula Kadaphysis issued the first Kushan copper coins. On his coins is the mention of Kosan. On his earlier coins was the mention of a term Yavug in Tokharian which meant the leader of a tribe. Thus, the coins tell us the story of how he became a king from a mere tribal leader. Vimataktu called himself Sotar Megas on his coins, meaning the great savior. Vima Kadaphysis issued gold and copper coins. On his coins is the first anthropomorphic depiction of Shiva, various forms of Shiva, Nandipad, the king in various postures, the mint mark, the title assumed, as well as the name of the ruler is seen on the coins. It seems he tried to adapt to the Indian traditions. Kanishka issued coins in Greek and Kharoshti script. On his coins were depictions and the names of Indian, Greek, Roman, Mesopotamian and Persian deities. Huvishka also made coins with many deities. Vasudev was the first Kushan ruler with an Indian name. The Rabatak inscription written on a rock in the Bactrian language and the Greek script that gives the genealogy of the Kushan dynasty. A new school of art rose during the time of the Kushans called the Gandhar school of art, flourishing in Gandhar and the adjacent regions. We find many sculptures of kings like these, with the idols of local deities, toys and terracotta figurine. The decline of the Kushanas was gradual. In the last stages of the empire, the extent of their rule became very small. In the later stages, we find more copper coins as compared to the gold ones in an area quite small, which denotes the downfall of the empire. So this was about one of the forgotten dynasties that glorified the old world. Hope you liked this episode. Do like, share and subscribe to our channel. And remember, history is always in the making.